Today's lesson is a clean energy future built on suffering. Hi, everybody. My name is Roger, and my name is Helen. And today we're going to be talking about cobalt, which is an element that is used in batteries and other electronic devices, and in electric vehicles and stuff like that. But you've got to get it from some place. Unfortunately, it has to be mined in places of the world where workers can be exploited. So that's why we have this title. Are we talking about a clean energy? Future built on suffering. Maybe that's not the right thing. That's right. So cobalt is a mineral. It's a metal that you need to get from the earth. So it needs to be mined, and somebody has to do the mining. And we often forget about how the things that we use in our daily lives came about. Who was responsible for producing them? What kind of work and what kind of labor was put into making the things that we take for granted? Indeed. So it's mainly about mining cobalt in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and we're also going to be talking about child labor that seems to be going on there. So indeed, if you use your smartphone or your electric car, you may have these people in Congo to thank for your convenience. So let's get to it. Let's find out what this is all about. Let's listen to the first part of our lesson, and then we'll come back to talk about it. A clean energy future built on suffering. Being able to store clean electricity in super efficient batteries for long-term use, either in electric vehicles or buildings, will be a key step in mitigating climate change. One of the most important components of such batteries is the metal cobalt, which is mined primarily in the Democratic Republic of the Congo (DRC), a large country in Africa long troubled. By internal conflicts and extreme poverty. Cynthia wants to become a doctor in order to take away people's suffering. Cynthia 想要成为一位医师来解除人民的苦难，或是。When Bob went to jail, he put his parents through a lot of suffering. Bob 入狱时让父母受了许多折磨。另外，把这个字字尾的 ing 去掉，就变成了动词 suffer， 意思是患病或是经历不幸的事。像是 Darby suffered from a bad cold all weekend, but the doctor gave her some medicine to help. Darby 整个周末都受重感冒所苦，但医生给他一些药物来改善。也可以说。The company suffered a loss in profits. 这间公司遭受营业额损失。接着我们看到单字 mitigate， 这个字是动词，意思是缓和、减轻伤害或是危害等。像是 It is hoped that wind farms will mitigate the need for using fossil fuel. 希望风力发电厂会减轻对石化燃料的需求。也可以说。This company mitigates the impact its factories have on the environment by supporting various environmental charities. 这间公司借由支持各种环保慈善团体来缓和其工厂对环境造成的影响。另外，补充这个字的同义单字 alleviate, a l l e v i a t e, alleviate， 指减轻或是缓解。例如 ，The doctor gave Bill something to alleviate his pain. 医生给 Bill 开了一些减缓疼痛的药，或是 taking some honey can alleviate your sore throat. 吃一些蜂蜜可以缓解喉咙痛。So the title of today's lesson is "A Clean Energy Future Built on Suffering." 
So the word suffering here refers to serious pain that you feel, and this pain can be mental or it can be physical. So you can talk about the suffering of a patient who has gone through a serious illness, or you can talk about the suffering of victims of war, people who have seen a lot of bloodshed, murders, and people who have lost their lives. Exactly. So suffering, of course, is the noun here. It refers to when people suffer, and the verb, of course, is to suffer, to experience pain and inconvenience. And of course, if someone has done something bad to you, you can say, "Someday you're going to suffer. I'm going to make you suffer. You're going to pay for your crime." But in this particular case, we're talking about human suffering, and are we relying on that suffering to have a clean energy future? That is an interesting question. So here in the first part of the lesson, it says, "Being able to store clean electricity in super efficient batteries for long-term use." Either in electric vehicles or buildings, will be a key step in mitigating climate change. Now we've got the problem of climate change. Temperatures are going up all over the place. Weather patterns are changing, and of course, we're probably going to have food shortages eventually. And cities are going to be flooded because of rising water levels in the oceans. So we need to mitigate. Climate change. Here we've got the word mitigate. That's the verb here.、It、just means to reduce the severity of something, to make something less severe, to make it less painful, etc. You might take painkillers to mitigate your pain if you've suffered some sort of accident. Yes. So here we're talking about slowing down or making the effects of climate change less serious. We're mitigating climate change, and one way to do that is. To be able to store clean electricity in super efficient batteries. So a battery is an object that provides a supply of electricity to a machine, like a radio or a computer or a car. And batteries often need to be changed. If we're talking about those small batteries that you can buy at the convenience store, or if we're talking about larger batteries like the kind that's used in electric cars, those need to be Recharged, and in order for us to be able to rely on batteries for a clean future to reduce the effects of climate change, these batteries need to be super efficient. Something that is efficient works really well without wasting energy, without wasting time. So something that is super efficient works really well. So the prefix "super" just emphasizes the quality of that adjective. Right, and we want to store electricity. Of course, it's going to be clean electricity, electricity produced from clean sources, not from coal burning and things like that, but maybe from solar power or hydroelectricity and things like that. And one of the most important components of such batteries is the metal cobalt, which is mined primarily in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Or DRC, which is a large country in Africa, long troubled by internal conflicts and extreme poverty. Yes, the DRC, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, is a huge country in Central Africa there, and it's long had problems with civil war and internal conflicts. And of course, there are a lot of poor people. As well, but they mine cobalt there. To mine something means to get something out of the ground. You get minerals out of the ground, like coal and gold and magnesium and stuff like that. It all has to be mined. In this particular case, they mine cobalt. From a mine, cobalt is an element. I believe the atomic number is twenty-seven, and in Chinese it's called gu. And when I see the word cobalt, you know, I've having done painting before. One of the colors that a lot of artists use in their palettes is cobalt blue. Yes, and cobalt is one of the most important components of batteries. A component is one of several parts that make up 
a machine or a system. So in this case, we're talking about a battery, and a battery contains different components, and one of these components is the metal cobalt, which happens to be found in large quantity in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. In fact, this is a very mineral-rich country. The country also has a lot of gold and other minerals that are desired and needed by other countries to make things. Unfortunately, it suffers from internal conflicts and poverty, and we'll get to that in just a second. Let's move on now to the second part and continue to talk about cobalt from the DRC. On the surface, cobalt seems like a fairly harmless element. It occurs naturally in the Earth's crust, and it is far less toxic than many other metals. But the race to mine enough cobalt to satisfy the steadily increasing demand for the mineral is creating a host of environmental problems. Hastily established cobalt mines in the DRC have destroyed landscapes, polluted clean water sources, and made large areas of crop soil infertile. Varieties of candy, gum, and toothpaste that contain sugar alcohols are highly toxic to dogs. No fish live in the lake because of the toxic waste that was dumped there. 有鱼被清到鱼纳的有毒废弃物,没有鱼住在那座湖里。另外补充这个字的同一形容词, poisonous, P-O-I-S-O-N-O-U-S, poisonous, 意思是有毒的或是有害的。举例来说, Poisonous household chemicals should be kept away from children. 家中的有毒化学药物应该放在小孩拿不到的地方。或是, after eating poisonous mushrooms by accident, Danny was rushed to the hospital. 在不小心吃下有毒的蘑菇后, Danny被紧急送医。最后我们看到单字 infertile, 也可以念作 infertile. 这个字是形容词, 指贫瘠的或是无法生育的。像是, The area surrounding the volcano has been completely infertile since its last eruption. 在火山附近的地区，在上次火山爆发后，就变得非常的贫瘠。也可以说， the drug showed promise in treating infertile patients. 这种药对治疗不孕的患者带来希望。So taking a closer look at the element cobalt. On the surface, cobalt seems like a fairly harmless element. So if you just look at it superficially, if you just look at the way it appears without analyzing what's hidden inside or the situation around it, cobalt seems like it's just another element that you need to get from the ground. It occurs naturally in the Earth's crust, and it is far less toxic than many other metals. So here the word toxic means means poisonous. If something is toxic, then it contains poison or substances that can harm you. So if we're looking at cobalt, then it seems like, well, there's nothing wrong with it because it can't harm or poison the miners who are trying to get cobalt from the ground. So what is the big problem? Indeed. Yeah. What's the problem? Here in the next sentence, it says, but the race to mine enough cobalt to satisfy the steadily increasing demand for the mineral is creating a host of environmental problems. So we need sufficient quantities of cobalt to use in batteries because we're relying more and more on electric power for our devices, for our phones, for our scooters, and for our cars and other places. So of course we have this increasing demand for this mineral. A mineral is an inorganic substance that comes from the ground, and I mentioned some examples of minerals before, like phosphorus 
and coal and gold and silver. Those are all minerals that come from the ground, and of course, they usually come from mines. And of course, we have this large demand for this mineral for cobalt, and that of course is creating a lot of environmental problems. Here we have the phrase. A host of problems. A host of here just means a lot of something. It's causing lots of environmental problems. Yes, and why is it causing a lot of environmental problems? Well, hastily established cobalt mines in the DRC have destroyed landscapes, polluted clean water sources, and made large areas of crop soil infertile. So, in other words, these mines. Have been established very quickly because the country, the government, recognized that the rest of the world really needed the cobalt supply. They didn't waste any time establishing these cobalt mines. They wanted to make money, so these mines were established, were constructed very quickly without concern for a lot of problems that might arise from the construction of these mines. And some of these problems include the landscape's destruction, because when you build a mine, you are destroying the life that's growing on this piece of land. You might also be polluting clean water sources like lakes and rivers, and you're also making the soil on that land infertile, which means that the soil is no longer capable of sustaining growth of growing things. Exactly. So, of course, people in other countries, like in Asia and North America and Europe, they need that cobalt, and they're saying, "Hey, we don't care how you guys get it. We just need that cobalt for our batteries." So, we've got these cobalt mines in Congo. It's suffering from poverty, and of course, they need to make money quickly. So, they set up these mines. And of course, they've had some consequences here. Yeah, we've got、uh, dirty water, polluted water, and lots of soil is infertile. So, how the heck are they going to grow food in the future? These are serious environmental problems. Okay, let's move on now to the third and final part of our lesson for today. We'll listen to it first. Cobalt mining comes with a human cost too. Increased mining means more and more miners are being exposed to more and more cobalt. This is especially the case in unregulated mines, which often fail to provide workers with appropriate protective gear. In high doses, cobalt can be deadly, causing lung diseases, heart failure, and possibly cancer. Worse still, many of those participating in cobalt mining in the DRC are children, some as young as seven years old. Now, apart from destroying landscapes and polluting clean water sources and making crop soil infertile, cobalt mining comes with a human cost too. In other words, it also affects human beings. Increased mining means more and more miners are being exposed to more and more cobalt. So, the more one mines cobalt, the more those miners are being exposed to cobalt. Miners are those people who work in mines. They work underground to remove those minerals. And more and more miners, more and more people are doing this work and being exposed to cobalt. Right. So that's a human cost, and this is especially. The case in unregulated mines, which often fail to provide workers with appropriate protective gear. Okay, so of course, if you're going to work in a mine, if you're going to go under the ground and bring out these minerals, you need to have some protective gear. The air isn't so great down there, and your skin might get damaged in different ways. So you need to have some equipment. You need to have some special gear, and it's protective gear. Now here, gear is a non-count noun, so don't add an s to this word in this use here. You can say gear. Gears are countable if you're talking about gears on a bicycle or in a motorcycle. First gear, second gear. Oh, my bicycle has 21 gears, for example. But、uh, here, gear refers to equipment, and it's non-count. Those words are non-count nouns. 
Yes. So if we're talking about appropriate protective gear for minors, then we're talking about perhaps things like hard hats and gloves and special clothing that might protect them from the environment under the ground. So these objects of clothing would be considered appropriate. Something that is appropriate. Is suitable for a particular situation or purpose, and many times these unregulated mines, in other words, mines that are not controlled by the government or whose activities are not controlled by the government or some official body to make sure that nobody gets hurt, to make sure that there is no illegal activity going on. Oftentimes, these unregulated mines do not provide appropriate gear to protect the miners. Right, they're unregulated. The government is not controlling them, so the mining companies don't have to require the workers to wear protective gear. So they are exposed to various dangers, and in high doses. Or with a lot of contact, cobalt can be deadly, causing various problems like lung diseases, heart failure, and possibly cancer. So we did say that cobalt is a relatively safe metal, but we're talking about high doses here. If you're exposed to cobalt 24 hours a day or for many hours every day, it can be deadly. If something's deadly, it can cause death. Say a bite from a certain snake. Can be deadly if you don't do something about it. You might die. And yes, if you're exposed to cobalt for long periods of time, it could cause some problems. It could cause some lung diseases. It could cause heart failure. Your heart could give out on you, and you might die. And you might even get cancer by being exposed to cobalt for long periods of time. Worse still, many of those participating in cobalt mining in the DRC are children, some as young as seven years old. So we already talked about a very bad situation, which is that miners often do their job without protective gear, and they are exposed for long periods of time to cobalt, which can ruin their health. But even worse than this situation is the fact that a lot of the miners are young children. Some as young as seven years old. So this fact is emphasized by the phrase "worse still," which means basically even worse. I could also say, for instance, I never go hiking in the mountains alone because I'm afraid of getting lost, or worse still, getting injured with no one around to help me. That would be a terrible situation indeed, and that brings us to the end of our discussion for today. This is a serious problem, and we need to do something about it. And we'll continue talking about it in our next program. But right now, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher. Good morning, students. Hello, everyone. 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 Hello, To too much sun, 别让你的皮肤接触到太多阳光。好，另外，如果是用 expose somebody to something， 也可以表达说使某人接触、体验某事物。举例来说 ，They want to expose their children to classical music as much as possible. 他们想要让孩子们尽可能多接触古典乐。好，那么接着读到课文下一句，他说。在不受监管的矿场尤其如此，这些矿场常没有提供工人适当的防护装备。文中他是用 "This is especially the case" 点点点来表达什么什么尤其如此，尤其是这样。当我们用 be 动词加上 the case， 就是表达是这样没错。那 case 在这边有情况啊、情形的意思。如果加上否定字词 be not the case， 则是表达并非如此，并不是这么一回事。举例来说 ，Some dogs can have behavioral problems. 
But that's not the case with our dog. 有些狗啊可能会有行为问题，但我们的狗狗并非如此，并不是这样。好，那我们再顺便帮同学们整理几个跟 case 有关的用法哦。第一个是 in that case， 这个用语表示在那种情况下。既然如此，假如是那样的话，那这通常会摆在句首，意思就跟 if that's the case 或者是 that being the case 差不多。那假设朋友说，如果晚一点离开，我们就会碰到塞车，哎，那这时候可以回答 in that case we'd better leave early。既然如此，既然那样的话，我们最好早点离开。好，那么第二个要补充的是 ，in any case， 字面意思是在任何情况下，那它就是指说无论如何，不管怎么样。例如 ，I'm not sure how long the meeting will take， but I'll call you tonight in any case。我不确定会议会开多久，哎，但不管怎么样，我今天晚上一定会打电话给你的。好，那么第三个要补充的是。In somebody's case, 或是 in something's case, 你也可以用 in the case of 去加名词来表达说，以怎么样的例子来说，以怎么样的情况来说，这个 case 在这边就是有情况案例的意思。像我们造个例句 ，Berries are good for your health. In the case of blueberries, they can help lower blood pressure. 莓果呢，对健康是有益的。以蓝莓为例，以蓝莓的情况来说，它可以帮助降低血压。好，那以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾简单字吧。Battery. Whenever I go on a photography trip, I pack a spare battery for my camera. Component. We carefully check each component before assembling your computer. Toxic. Many household cleaning products contain toxic chemicals. Mineral. The valley is rich in minerals, so many companies have set up mines there. Miner. After days of digging, the miners finally found a gold deposit. Appropriate. Are you sure those are appropriate shoes for a hiking trip? Gear. Stephen has been fishing for years, so he has a lot of expensive gear. Deadly. These mushrooms look harmless, but they can be deadly when eaten. Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you enjoyed reading along with us. I am Roger. I'm Helen. See, See you next time. time.